How did maths go from this to this? I'm sure you can relate. When you first started learning maths, it was simple, but as the years progressed, it became more and more complex. But maths was not always like this. Just like the world around us, it constantly evolved over time with increasing contributions. This begs the question, what was early maths like? Why did people use it and how did it evolve? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this series on the history of mathematics. Welcome to Shrouded Science, where we explore the science and maths of the world around us. As a general rule in history, the further back you look, the more and more scarce information becomes. The earliest evidence for mathematics is prehistoric, predating the existence of any form of paper. The Ishango bone, found in Central Africa, is believed to be dated over 20,000 years ago. This bone depicts what we believe to be a tally counting system. Clearly our prehistoric ancestors developed the need to quantify amounts. However, this is not quite mathematics as we know it and is more so just counting. We need to fast forward a little to find some more concrete evidence of the use of mathematics. The ancient Mesopotamian and Egyptian civilizations demonstrate compelling evidence for early development and documentation of mathematics. Through the use of papyri and tablets, these civilizations were able to transfer knowledge through communities and pass it down through time. This was crucial in the evolution of knowledge. Here more complex uses of mathematics were developed beyond just counting. Mesopotamia is a historical region situated in the Tigris-Euphrates river system and occupied the area that is now home to modern-day Iraq, Kuwait, as well as Turkey, Iran and Syria. Through tablets discovered from the Mesopotamian civilizations, we are able to see knowledge slowly accumulated over time. In the region Sumer, around 2700 BCE, we see tablets show a multiplication table. With three columns, the first two are thought to represent distances, which when multiplied produce the final column, which is the corresponding area. Moving forward in time to around 1800 BCE, during the tenure of the Babylonian Empire, we see clay tablets that are believed to be lessons for how to calculate the area of different geometric shapes. The area of a trapezium was calculated to be the average of the bases multiplied by the average of the sides. And the area of a circle was calculated using pi equals 3. In fact, in 1750 BCE, during the reign of Hammurabi the Great and a whopping thousand years before Pythagoras, we see a table containing integer solutions to a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The exact purpose is debated, but it could be used for construction. Turning our attention across the Red Sea, in the Egyptian kingdom we see functional uses of mathematics for the purposes of administration. Depicted in the wall painting in the tomb of Mena, we see a scribe who was in charge of a great degree of reporting. Determining the size of fields, estimating crop yields in order to calculate taxes, and reporting this to the pharaoh, primitive mathematics was at the core of Egyptian civilization. From Egypt we find two key texts, pivotal in our understanding of the history of mathematics. These are the Moscow and Rhind papyrus, named on their discovery and not their content. They deal with concepts of linear equations and geometry. Linear equations were used to solve issues such as the distribution of food. How do you divide 100 loaves of bread to 30 people? Or more complicated, how much flour does a community of 100 people require? Geometry was once again used to find the area of a circle, except, unlike previous estimates of pi equals 3, these texts estimate pi to be 3.16, impressively close to its true value. The Moscow papyrus shows formulas for the calculation of the volume of 3D objects such as pyramids and the surface area of a hemisphere. Mathematics is constantly evolving. The ancient history highlights the progress from simply counting numbers to the development of geometry and equations. However, this is merely the beginning in the history of mathematics. Next, we will explore developments made during the classical era featuring figures such as Pythagoras, Plato, and Aristotle. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.